What's up everybody? It's me, Melanie Mac here on my brand new channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you want to see where else you can follow me, check out the links in the description. I'm everywhere. Would love to see you there. So, let's go ahead and dive in today's video. I wanted to talk about an interview um, about like, you know, we got the upcoming The Batman movie coming out, which I personally have been really stoked for um and then there was an interview with robert pattinson and zoe kravitz and they started talking about well he brought up final fantasy 7 and all that kind of stuff and the way that she responded was just so so off-putting to me unfortunately which makes me so upset because i was very happy about her casting i think she embodies catwoman so freaking well and just her overall aesthetic her attitude just her vibe i love it but uh, this really was off-putting off for me. And now I'm hoping that I can not cringe when I see her and think of this. So uh, here is the tweet where I first saw everything. And let's go ahead and watch video. Maybe I'm going to make it smaller so I don't get like copyright uh, claimed or anything like that. Let's just watch it. I thought I was in love as well. I was in love with yeah. Paris. And Tifa. Antifa, of course. Yeah, everybody Antifa, wants to have both. Yeah. But it's the no, two sides. Yeah. It's, the, it's the two options of guys. You can have this. You don't you know Final Fantasy? No. It's the best. It's a love triangle uh -huh. where Eris or Aerith, depending on what, what version of the game you have, uh -huh. it's sometimes mistranslated. First, I love that he's that excited about you can tell that this is like just thinking about final fantasy 7 and his his little crushes on on Aerith and tifa it, it makes him excited just kind of how we think of things from gaming from when we were young and all that kind of stuff you know for me talking about classic tomb raider and all that and so that's fun and then of course she has to just kill it like she's like the really kind girl who has this, that has superpowers like to like heal everyone and like make the world Ugh. a better place Poor I mean, women, we have to heal everyone. I mean, Tifa's like... Seriously? Poor women, we have to heal everyone. Really? <laughs> Healing people is awesome. And it's not just women who are healers. There's plenty of games and media, the other stuff and media, like movies and stuff like that, where men are healers too. But I just don't see... It. I don't know. I don't know. Awesome. This like sexy little thing. He's like a thief and stuff to wear the short skirt. And you're like... I can't decide. And cool. then, and then, Aeris this is crazy. and then Aeris okay. right at her peak gets killed. Well, this is how every guy did, like figures out what love is. Oh and then it never, it, that's uh, the ideal woman. And, and it never gets any, you never. Either the one that's going to heal everything and the one in the short skirt. These are the options. <laughs> oh my God. Two options. This is the problem <laughs> with the world. <laughs> the problem with the world. How is that a problem? You got. A healer, which is an awesome power to have. And then a girl in a short skirt. That's her crime. Short skirt. <sighs> Dude. This was just so infuriating to, to watch. So, <laughs> Just Some Pig says, Who could have known that Robert is a closeted base Chad? <laughs> it was neat seeing him nerd out about Final Fantasy VII. And you could tell it just sparked a lot of, like, joy in him uh to talk about that i think that's amazing and and to the fact that she's just killing his vibe i hate it when women do this to men too and, and not to say it, men do this to women as well sometimes but i feel like it's just more often you see it that way is that if a guy actually shows some sort of excitement and giddiness about something they just oh please really wow <laughs> gotta just like knock everything um <laughs> Sputzy, she says this is why women aren't allowed to play video games. <laughs> Does she actually realize she's playing one of the most sexualized DC characters, right? But it's okay if she does it. It's fine if she does it. But yeah, this guy stands Zoe's reaction. Okay. Um, someone needs to put Zoe Kravitz on to Final Fantasy VII because she just doesn't understand. That's another thing is to constantly bash stuff that you don't know anything about. It's like, you can tell she has no idea. But, yeah. This is why I hate video games. It appeals to male fantasy. <laughs> oh, such a crime, man. Such a crime. Now, this is just what, this is what she's mad about. This I wish I had a bigger picture here, but this is what I found. Um, 
Because, I mean, he's talking about the classic versions, too. So it's just like, dude, I... She looks awesome. She's a cool character. I mean, she's obviously a very famous, iconic character. And she's a healer. And being a healer is great. I would love to be able to heal people in real life. Do you realize how cool that would be? Um, and Tifa, okay, so she's like that strong punch kick. She's that like brute force type. But because she's wearing a short skirt, she has a problem. And this is the hypocrisy of it. I hope this doesn't demonetize me. But she wears this. How are you going to get mad at this when you wear this? And she looks great. She's stunning. That's another thing is I don't get whatever people complain about stuff like female characters wearing revealing outfits and all that. It just reads that they're jealous. But why is why is Zoe Kravitz got to be jealous of anybody? She's beautiful. I just don't get it. I feel like there's either there's like this double standard with that. You know, you obviously have your male feminist types who want to complain, and I, I bash them all the time. But when it comes to women who hate on characters like this, they usually, A, aren't considered conventionally attractive, and so they take it out on other characters, and they want other characters to not be attractive so that it can make them feel better for some reason. Um, or B, if they are conventionally attractive, then they believe that only they can be sexy, but that's it. <laughs> That's just kind of what it reads to me as. Uh, and I don't, I don't understand it. Why is this character threatening Zoe Kravitz? What is so threatening about this? It's annoying, man. It's annoying. And, and I'm, I'm disappointed because, man, I was going to be so stoked to see her as Catwoman. And now I'm just going to remember this. But hopefully I'll still be able to enjoy it anyway. Because, I mean, I, I do think... I, I kind of have some... I feel like the costume looks weird and all that kind of stuff from what I've seen in trailers and all that. But uh, I do think that she has the attitude to pull off Catwoman extremely well. So I'm hoping I can just keep this in the back of my mind or, or let it go and still enjoy her performance. <laughs> so... Anyway, let me go ahead and go into some comments. So Edman says, don't let the haters discourage you. You are inspiring me to be better. I believe God is speaking to me through you. The scriptures you've mentioned gave me answers to a problem I've been struggling with. So thank you for being brave enough to speak truth on your platform. And this, this means so much to me. Thank you so much, Ed. That makes me happy to think that even if it's just a couple people who are getting something out of it whenever I share uh, my verses of the day and that kind of stuff, uh, that it, it means a lot. I feel like, okay, I'm doing something right. So thank you so much. Spike says, Melanie, I've given thought about finally attending church. How do you find a church that works for you? Uh, I get asked this sometimes because whenever I post pictures that I'm at church and stuff like that on Sundays and it's a good question because it's important like I mentioned on my last video there's some churches that are just very uh uptight and I don't like those um or there's some churches that are just <clears throat> excuse me there's some churches that are just like super formal or whatever and I ain't about that either really um so it's just finding what what you like and it depends like if you want a super formal church then um you can seek that out. But if you just want a more casual, come as you are, chill church, I personally like non-denominational churches or sometimes Assembly of God churches. Um, but non-denominational are, are my favorite. They usually, it depends on the, like the size of the church and depends on the church, of course, but they usually got good music. Uh, my church has an awesome band. Uh, they got, they're, they're, they're more relaxed. And yeah, I, I go to church in hoodies and, uh, my, uh, leggings, my flare leg leggings. <laughs> so I'm just like very chill when I go to church and I love it. Uh, Metroid 86 says, my question is with the diet that you're on, especially with, uh, with your, do you have a recipe list that we can use to make our own food that you usually eat? Uh, I'm, I want to work on a cookbook, uh, one of these days. Because uh, I do carnivore mostly and sometimes keto. But for the most part, I mean, just the TLDR of it. On like Monday through Friday, 
I'm just eating like a pound of ground beef and a pound of ground chicken usually with some sugar-free G Hughes barbecue sauce. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's like, I keep it simple. I keep it real simple. I like when I'm very optimal and on point with my diet and fitness and I'm actually like at the gym a lot. I've kind of ever since visiting my aunt, um, I've been, I'm working on getting back on track cause I haven't been in the gym in like a week and a half. So I got to get back on track. And so it's been harder for me. I've been wanting to like slack more as a result, but I'm going back today to the gym and getting back on track with things. So whenever I'm on track, I look at f- food differently. It's a, it's fuel. It's not just, oh, let me eat for just entertainment. Uh, it's fuel. And so whenever I'm tracking my macros, tracking my protein intake, all that kind of stuff, it's like, okay, I'm actually fueling my body and making it optimal and stronger and all that kind of stuff. And then on the weekends, I do like to be a little more relaxed. And so then I'll allow myself like more cheese and um, like a keto treat, sometimes like a keto ice cream, like Rebel Ice Cream makes keto ice creams. I'm not sponsored or anything, but if they want to go ahead. Uh, So that's what I do. I just think as a general rule, you should always keep protein, protein intake high, shoot for one gram of protein per um, one pound of your body weight of goal body weight. If you're doing that, you're going to be in a good spot. And I just feel like ground ground chicken and ground beef, like lean, uh, is is a way to easily hit those targets. And then anything else you need for fuel, like fats, um, you can adjust accordingly. And then carbs, again, I, I've, I go on about this. Carbs are, are usually more harm than good for most people, unless you are exceptionally active. Uh, and even then, for some people, it's still not. So fats and carbs are fuel. Uh, and it's, you need a deficit in this to lose fat. Uh, and then if you want to gain fat, you'd need an increase in this. Um, so that's the typical principle of how it works and protein. You're not going to gain fat on your body from protein. I made a thread about this on Twitter. If you want to read it, cause some people want to bring up gluconeogenesis and they just completely misunderstand how it works. Um, but yeah, look up my, I tweeted about it the other day or yesterday. So you can check that out. Um, this, okay. In response to my. Lara Croft video I talk about all the time. Straken says, Reboot Lara is so bland and generic, she could be an NPC in any game. Think what you will about Aloy, but she is at least a character that stands out and doesn't cry all the time. And I, I agree with that. I I, uh, I haven't played Forbidden West yet, so I can't really judge Aloy's character as much there. But I did like her in Zero Dawn. Um, I do feel like that. I feel like, uh, for example... With uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, a lot of the, especially Rise of the Tomb Raider, a lot of the side characters kind of, uh, like, outshined Lara. Now, in Shadow, she did have more of a personality, uh, but she, was, she wasn't she was Lara Croft. I, I did find her likable enough in some instances, but she wasn't Lara Croft. Uh, that's my issue. But I do feel like, in general, when they try so hard to just make her this lawful good character... Um, She does often get outshined and I'm so sick and tired of the whininess, the crying. Every time she does something good, they beat her down again. I'm sick of that. All right. X-Men says, not trying to be offending, but have you ever researched where the woke term comes from? It might make you reconsider using it in such derogatory manner. You speak about division, but look to be creating more divide. You know, I quite frankly don't give a crap where the term woke comes from. It's irrelevant to me. Uh, (laughs) the, The woke people started calling themselves woke so that's what we call them now if they don't like it well they, they probably should have stopped labeling themselves that the other crowd we call ourselves based the based versus the woke so if y'all want to make fun of me and and use based as a derogatory go ahead i don't give a crap stop stop letting words offend you that's my thought is it's just a word why do you let a word offend you so much <laughs> Gnome says, keep using your right to bear arms. I loved this because on my last video, I talked about, I answered a question about why I wear tank tops. Uh, I just like to show my arms. They're like my, probably my favorite feature on myself. So I like to show them. (laughs) And okay, that was the last one. Let's go ahead and go into the verse of the day. Uh, Proverbs 1430. I wanted to talk about jealousy today. Uh, It says, a tranquil heart gives life to flesh, but envy 
makes the bones rot. Uh, and I really love how this was stated because uh, the thing about just to be told like, hey, don't be jealous. If you're just told that, okay, yeah, you know. But when you're told in this way, like, okay, envy makes the bones rot, that really stresses that jealousy, envy, all that kind of stuff. It ain't hurting nobody but you. And yeah, it, it's just not a good practice to have. And this is one thing I find that this can happen in, in a number of ways. There's so many ways that we can be jealous of others, whether you, we're jealous about how somebody is attractive or we're jealous about somebody having more money than us or we're jealous about someone being more successful than us. This, that, and the other. I think that it, it's a very natural feeling to to want to, to feel jealous sometimes. But uh, that's why it's so important to, to learn to overcome that because it only hurts us. It's easier said than done. But I find with a lot of things, like when it comes to jealousy, this, that, and the other. Now, if you're, if you are, de are struggling with jealousy, but then you find yourself constantly knocking other people down to make you feel better about yourself, then you're not, it's never going to get better. It's like you, what, whatever you feed yourself and how you act and what you dwell on and what you think about is you're feeding it and you're going to make it stronger. So if it's jealousy that you have a struggle with and you're constantly, you know, making excuses or putting other people down so you can feel better, like, oh, well, this content creator is only successful because they're more attractive than me. So that's not my fault. You know, a lot of people will resort to that. And I think that it comes natural for us to sometimes try to make excuses. If So if I were to think of something like someone who's more successful than me, got more successful faster than me or whatever, because I've been doing this for 13 years. Um... Then, yeah, I could make excuses in my head. Well, it's only because they're more attractive. It's only because they, you know, they they know somebody or this, that, and the other. And in the moment, that might make me feel like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's out of my control. So I don't have to feel bad about it. And I don't have to, like, self-reflect. Uh, in the moment, it feels like a little Band-Aid that you're putting on that. But it's only going to hurt your progress. Okay, so uh, you got to do what you got to do. And it's going to make you have a more envious heart in general. And so the more that you check yourself with that kind of stuff, and when you find yourself thinking things like that, just just like cut yourself off, man. Mentally say, like, seriously, girl? Like, if I'm talking to myself, really, girl? Really? It's not, like, good for them. I just need to be happy for them. And if I'm going to be jealous, then, like, don't look at it until I can be strong enough and confident enough in my own self to to handle it because if it's going to make me feel this way then like I need to fix something in myself and so yeah when it comes to jealousy or anything else it's like we really need to work on entertaining and thinking about and dwelling on things that are positive and, and that are good and not to say you have to be toxically positive because I think toxic positivity is another thing uh an issue uh but just kind of try to focus on things that are going to help improve you as a person and make you better as a person. And I'm talking to myself with this as well. So I thought this was good to share. But anyway, that's today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, check out the links I have in the description if you want to follow me elsewhere as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, go boom. I'm